To be perfectly honest, I'm not really sure why this exists. But it's also actually kind of cool. We are in the middle of a handheld gaming renaissance. There are so many being added to the market constantly right now, to the point where we're seeing a lot of new ones that are targeting very specific niche markets. And one of the kind of weirder ones to me is the Logitech G Cloud. And what's interesting about the G Cloud is that instead of being focused on being a handheld PC or an emulation device or running its own library, the focus of the G Cloud is stream play. You're not really meant to use this to play games that are actually natively installed on it. Instead, the focus is to use apps like, say, xCloud or GeForce Now for cloud-based games play, uh, or even remote playing different devices like Xbox, Steam Link, PlayStation with a little bit of extra workaround going on. Which, speaking of playing Xbox or PlayStation games, we are coming up on the two-year anniversary of their latest gen systems. I'm going to do a couple videos talking about that, how things have changed over the years, and how I feel about them over my time with them. So if you don't want to miss out on that video, make sure to subscribe. Part of what makes this weird for me is that I do actually like the concept of remote play and cloud-based services. I think those are really great options to have, but a device whose sole focus is using those feels a little odd up front to me. Now, I've had this for about the past week and a half, give or take. Logitech did send this out to me to review and try out, and I gotta say, it did surprise me. There's one big aspect of it that still holds it back a lot, in my opinion, but a lot of the rest of the experience uh, was really a pleasant surprise. Focusing on those positive surprise aspects for a bit, uh, first off, just the physical build of the G Cloud. I actually really like the way this device feels. Uh, not that necessarily from seeing images of it before I thought it was going to be uncomfortable or anything, but, you know, obviously we have a number of different handheld devices out there that are very plain, you know, rectangular design from the front like this, and depending on how the grip shape on the back is, that can either be surprisingly comfortable or not great at all, and this, thankfully, falls under that earlier category. The grip shape on the corners here ends up working out really well. It's a nice, comfortable grip over a long period of time, and the physical design of the button placement and quality of buttons and sticks everything across the board is solid. The tension on the sticks, the way the D-pad feels, the crispness of the ABXY buttons, the tension on the R2 and L2, all of it feels really nice to me and much more premium than I was expecting. There are some particularly nicer, more expensive Pro Controllers I've used that, yeah, the inputs feel better, but for being the sort of stock part of this handheld device, I think these are all really good. So that was a nice pleasant surprise uh, when playing first right out of the box. But the thing that really caught me off guard, and it's kind of a dumb, obvious thing when you think about it, I just hadn't until I started really using it, uh, is by being a stream play focused device, it's never actually draining a lot of its own resources for running games. And as a result, the heat production and battery life on this thing is fantastic. Yes, there's a native experience being lost here, and we'll talk about how that compares in a little bit, but because it's just relying on stream play at all times, the battery life on this is far longer than a lot of the other handhelds out there. I mean, coming from the Switch OLED and the Steam Deck, there were plenty of times where I was using this plane and going like, oh, I'm probably starting to get low on battery, and no, it's actually not even halfway through yet. And I feel like that it's a really important feature to stress in a handheld. I mean, the fact that I just didn't have to worry about plugging this into the wall nearly as often as I've had with some other devices is really nice. Uh, now, of course, there are limitations that come with this approach as well, though, because being something that relies on stream play, it's not exactly something you can truly play on the go. You need to have access to a solid Wi-Fi connection somewhere, and so you're still kind of being forced to root yourself either in playing at a place that you have convenient Wi-Fi available at, like an office you work at, uh, or of course just playing at home. And that's where the real big kind of comparison point comes down to, right, is what limitations stream play has to offer versus something that does play games natively. Now, some of these aspects are going to vary a lot individually based on the quality of internet where you are. Uh, how good of a router you have, how expensive of an internet plan you have, these are things that are going to heavily impact the experience of using a device like this, because ultimately that really is a major determining factor in whether or not stream play is going to work smoothly or not. And thankfully, good solid internet is something I have access to, and the experience of using this has honestly been really good. There are absolutely situations where you can tell you are not playing on a native device, particularly when it comes to cloud-based apps. While we've hit a point where a lot of those can still run really well and maintain a good smooth looking image at all times, there's going to be a noticeable amount of latency that depending on the type of game you're playing can be an issue. Uh, if I'm playing something like say a turn-based RPG, not a big deal. I can play Persona 5 on xCloud and not really 
worry about whether or not my inputs are slightly delayed compared to what I want or would feel is natural. Uh, but if I wanted to play something like, say, a first-person shooter, uh, Doom, Deathloop, whatever, then that's going to be a more noticeable problem. Now, while this is something that I encountered more often with cloud-based apps, uh, remote playing stuff, especially on the same local network, was a fantastic experience. You know, really the main use case for me with this device moving forward, uh, outside of just doing the review of this video is, I really like just laying back on my couch, using this and Steam linking to my PC in order to play my library there. It's a convenient way of accessing these libraries I have on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. And sure, these are systems that I do have access to in the home, but if I want to play in handheld for whatever reason, whether because someone else is watching something on TV or I'm laying back in bed or whatever, this is allowing me to do that in a comfortable form factor and with a battery life that actually outpaces a lot of my other handhelds. Remote play situations do still have their occasional hiccups now and then. I'll have a moment where everything freaks out for a moment and then it catches back up and everything's fine. But while it's running smoothly, it actually does feel like a native experience. Now, of the systems I've talked about, one that does run into a particular problem is PlayStation. Uh, the reason being the fact that the official PlayStation app doesn't really play nicely with a lot of other third-party devices. Uh, in the case of the G Cloud, you can run PlayStation Remote Play, you can access your PlayStation, that's all well and good, but it still wants you to connect a DualShock 4 or DualSense controller, or just rely on the touchscreen controls, which kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, this thing having its own sticks and buttons. Now, if you're not familiar with Remote Play options on the PlayStation, while there is the official option from Sony, there are actually third-party Android apps you can grab uh, that do cost a little money up front, but do give you ways of remote playing your PlayStation successfully and will play nice with the controls. The way a lot of this works out and comes together is that in a very specific circumstance, the G Cloud is a really awesome device to have on hand. If you own multiple modern systems, if you have a PlayStation, you have an Xbox, you have a PC, you have good internet, and you like the ability to remotely play those to a handheld device, this is actually a really interesting experience. The biggest problem this runs into though, aside from in the first place requiring you to have these other devices or services to work with, is its price point. As surprisingly cool as this thing is to me, it's really hard for me in my own brain to justify a $350 price tag for something that is not playing any of its own games, which to be fair is a little inaccurate. Uh, this is actually an Android tablet at its heart, and so you do have access to the Google Play Store and you can download app games and play them that way, but that's really not what the focus of this device is, and spec-wise, it shows. I mean, it's only got an internal storage of 64 gigabytes. There's not like an SD card expansion slot. The performance specs of it aren't really designed for getting the most out of these games either. The real goal here is again, that stream play aspect. And at 350 bucks, that's just a bit of a tough sell when there are other options out there that are either less expensive and play their own library of games, like a Switch, uh, or are a little more expensive and offer a lot of similar library access, like say with the Steam Deck. My time with the G Cloud has really changed my mind about one aspect of the situation, but has also really strengthened my stance on another part of it, is that I really think there actually is a potentially cool market for stream-focused devices like this, the price point just needs to come down. There's a lot of merit to something like this. It just can't be the price point that this is at this moment. If you've got the money to burn and you just want another handheld toy to try out and play with, uh, go for it. Honestly, it's really cool. Uh, and I think the biggest thing for me now at this point is I'm a lot more interested in seeing where this goes in the near future. We already are seeing other devices like this start to prop up. The prices aren't looking exactly any better anywhere else just yet. Uh, but as more of these are released, maybe we start seeing those price points go down. We see additional functionalities and features open up. I think there's a really cool potential future here. It's just not there yet.